Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasman, and today we are going to be drawing some angles. We are in our math journal, volume two, unit six, lesson ten, and I am on page two hundred and sixteen. Okay. So as you can see here, I have a number of rays that are just dying for a mate. They need a second ray to connect to them to make them into angles. Now, in order to do that, I need a couple of tools. First, being a pencil. Secondly, I need one of these two items, a half circle protractor or my math template that has a half circle protractor or a full circle protractor. Okay? Now, before I get started on making angles, I'm going to swap out my notebook for this photocopy, which will lay flat on my uh, standing desk a lot easier. Okay? So let's take a look at number one. It says, draw an angle measuring 35 degrees using ray HG as one of its sides. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit on ray HG, shall we? So, in order for me to find 35 degrees, I need to lay down my protractor on the ray in question. And I have to line up the center point of my protractor with this line that is the base of my semicircle. Or I could do it this way with the full circle, which allows me to put the vertex, well, it's just an endpoint right now, but the little dot in the center of my full circle and line up my ray with zero, okay? Now, I like using the semicircle one uh, better because it allows me to draw some points. Okay, so if I line up my semicircle protractor and have the zero degree mark on my ray, like so, I have to find 35 degrees. Now, if you notice these little slots here, I've got a slot that goes from 10 to 30 above the uh, arch right here, and then I've got 30 odd to about 55 or so underneath, and then I have another arching slot over, under, over, under, you get it. They, they had to alternate because if they did it all on one side, there would be nothing to hold this piece onto the math template, it would just fall off. So I want to find 35 degrees, okay? So I've lined up my vertex, or endpoint, and I lined up my baseline with my ray. Here's 30, here's 40, 35 would be in the middle. So all I'm doing here, so making a little point, like so. Okay. Now that I've got my point, I can connect the dots. So I'm going to just use the edge of my template, otherwise known as a straight edge. And I'm just going to draw a straight line. I'm going to make it a ray by giving it a, an arrowhead at the top. Okay. And then to complete this angle, I just need to make the angle symbol right here, that little uh, curvy line right there, okay? And then within side the angle, I'll write 35 degrees, okay? Now if I line my template back up, yep, my line is about 35 degrees. It's pretty darn close, okay? Let's try another one, okay? Number two says, draw an angle measuring 150 degrees using ray CD as one of its sides. Well, I'm going to approach it the same way. So I'm going to lay down my protractor right here. Okay, I'm going to line up the end point, which will become the vertex, with my center point of my template, or my semicircle protractor. Okay, and then I have my line lined up here with the ray CD, okay? 150 degrees, now that's gonna be an obtuse angle. So here's the 90 degree mark, that's the halfway point from zero to 180. 150 is, oh, about right here, okay? Now, I'm gonna put my dot right here, but then I'm gonna point something out to you, and that is 150 is also listed over here. Now that can be confusing for some kids because they will see it labeled 150 and think, oh, I could just put the dot there and they would make an angle that looks a lot like 
problem number one, a very acute angle. Okay, what's going on here? Well, this protractor allows me to measure angles from both directions. Okay, so I could start with a ray CD that is pointing to the right. See, I turn my paper upside down. And I could lay my protractor down on the page. Okay, line up my endpoint with my center of my protractor, line up my zero degree mark with the ray, and then if I put 150 right over here, I would have a, a ray that is on the opposite, okay? Like so, okay? So I can have two directions that my ray can go. I can make a ray that is 150 degrees open up in this direction, or I can make my ray come out here. I'm going to use green to differentiate. And the angle could come out this way. Okay. Both of those are 150 degree angles. They're just originating from different parts. Okay. I still have to measure 150 degrees. So when I again line up my protractor from here to here, it's about 150. And then if I flip my paper over, I get the same measurement, but I'm using the opposite side. Okay. Actually, my line is a little bit more like 145-ish. Okay, but you get the picture. Okay. But I'm just going to scribble that one out. And that's how you do it. You have to first plot a point that, that relative to the vertex, I mean, it's an endpoint until you connect the dots, uh, relative to the endpoint, okay, is going to make an angle the size that you're looking for, okay? So why don't you try problems three, four, and five on your own, okay? Problem number three is 60 degrees, so you know that's going to be acute. 15 degrees for problem number four is going to be very acute. And then problem number five says draw an angle of measuring 330 degrees. Now that's going to be a very uh, wide ver uh, reflex angle. Okay, I almost said vertex angle. That's not a thing. Uh, reflex angle. Okay, so you might have to incorporate your full circle protractor here. So if I start with zero, lining up my zero degree mark with the ray itself. Let me zoom in there a little bit. And if I line up my end point with the center of my full circle protractor, here's 330. Now there, 330 looks very acute. Like if I were to draw this angle, okay? The problem with the full circle one, it doesn't give you the slots like the half circle. But I can kind of like draw a line in my mind and make a point using this space within this uh, rhombus, right? Okay. So I have identified my angle. But again, 330 is a reflex angle. So the temptation would be to draw the line here and write 330 degrees like so. But that doesn't make any sense because this one here is 35 degrees and it's practically the same width, right? So what do I need to do? Well, I need to move that angle to the outside of these two rays, okay? In other words, starting here at zero, it's going to curl around in this direction. You've probably seen these before, okay? The measure of the angle on the outside of this vertex is 330 degrees. Okay. And since a circle is 360 degrees total, the measure of this angle on the inside would be just 30, because 330 plus 30 gives me 360. If you're confused about all this, take a look at this corner symbol where it says SRB, Student Reference Book, pages 208 and 210, uh, gives you more detail about these concepts. Okay. Questions? Well, if you have some, you need to talk to your math teacher if I'm not that math teacher in question. 
Okay, if you're watching this online to help you with your homework, or uh, if this is a part of your instruction, either virtually or live in class, you need to turn to your math teacher and say, hey, show me how to do this. I'm confused. I hope this video wasn't that confusing. I hope it was helpful to point you in the right direction, pun intended. Uh, I hope you have a good day, and we'll speak again soon, friends. Thanks.